Hello, and welcome back to The Grunt Perspective. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about infantryman clothing, specifically the choice between a field uniform or a regular uniform, it's commonly called a field uniform now, or a combat uniform. Um, but before I talk about that, just a couple of things to talk about with, with, uh, your, with uh, your uniforms. Um, one, the way I think about my uniform is like a shell. It's the only thing that's in between me and the elements, right? Um, I'm laying in the fucking dirt all the time. I'm in the mud. I'm in the rain. I'm in the snow, things like that. And the only thing that's in between me and that is my uniform, right? So on that subject, you really need to make sure that all of your uniforms are serviceable. And uh, there's a huge topic of debate, or I know that this is going to be a huge topic of debate inside the comments is the difference between a field and a garrison uniform. And a lot of people say, you know, hey, Gunny, Staff Sergeant, these are my field camis. And what they're saying by that is that it's okay for their field camis to have holes inside of them because they only wear them to the field. They don't wear them in garrison and things like that. Uh, and you don't look presentable when you're in the field. That argument aside, you really shouldn't have holes inside of your uniform ever. Um, the reason being is just like I said, your uniform is your shell, right? It's the only thing that protects you from the elements. And if you're going to the field with holes, got blown out knees, you're blown out crotch and things like that, your, your sleeves damn, damn near falling off, uh, you're starting yourself off already in a degraded state and it allows dirt, mud, insects, creepy crawlies, snakes, and things like that to get into your uniform. And, you know, you don't want that inside your uniform because you're going to get fucking sick, right? Uh, so all of your uniforms should be serviceable. They shouldn't have holes in any of them. If you have a uniform that you want to wear in garrison, fine. But all I'm saying is all of your field uniforms or your field camis should also be serviceable um, because of that, because of that, that reason. Uh, you need to make sure that, like, your shell isn't compromised because it's the only thing that separates you from the elements. Uh, long term, it's going to get you sick, things like that. So um, getting into field, field uniforms here, right? Field uniforms are the, are the mainstay. They're old, reliable, right? Fucking granddad went to World War II in a fucking field uniform, right? He didn't have no fucking combat uniform. Granddad didn't have a lot of things, right? But e either way, uh, they should really be your mainstay. So to talk about the benefits versus, versus the drawbacks of field uniforms, uh, the number one benefit is the durability and the versatility. Uh, they're extremely durable. They, uh, you know, if you're walking through real thick vegetation like we are, um, they're not going to tear on you. You know, you're going to get hung up in the brush and shit like that, but you're just going to be able to walk through it and your uniform's not going to tear, assuming it's, you know, serviceable, right? On that subject, if you have a really old set of camis or like an old uniform that you like to wear to the field because it's real old, real thin, real comfortable, feels like pajamas, right? Probably shouldn't wear that uniform to the field because when they get real old like that, they start to tear really easily, right? I'm not saying that you need to wear your newest uniform to the field, but I am saying that once they get to that point where there are more patches than they are uniform, you need to, you need to let that uniform die. You need to put it up on the shelf or throw it away or sell it to a surplus store or something like that because it's, it's not going to do you very well. Um, I know it can be sentimental. You know, these are, these are my camis. I've had them for five years. I had them in boot camp, things like that, but you got to let them go. All right um, now, the durability piece. Just like I said, you know they don't tear. I mean, I'm, I mean they do tear, but they tear significantly less than a combat uniform, um, and they're going to do you well. Uh, the, the versatility, right? There's a lot of things that you can do with a field uniform that you can't necessarily do with a combat with a combat uniform. One of them is like making a litter with it with 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 a uniform and some long sticks or maybe some extra rifles that's, that no one's using a anymore because they're fucking shot up. Uh, you could make a litter with blouses and trousers and things like that. Um, I'd like to see someone try and do that with a combat uniform because it's just going to fucking tear right away. 
uh, you get dragged inside a inside a field uniform. It's not going to fucking tear. You get dragged in a combat a combat uniform. It's probably going to fucking tear. Things like that. Um, so field uniform should really be your number one go to. To talk a little bit about the drawbacks is uh, they are a little bit warmer. Uh, especially than like combat uniform, they do get warm. Uh, I've worn field uniforms in 100 degree weather, 100% humidity, and I was fine. Right? You just need to make sure that you're keeping an eye on yourself and your guys specifically, your your guys, right? That they're not getting too hot. And you, if you need to take a break, then you need to take a break. S you need to sit down and pull a little sills, then whatever. Um, make sure they're eating. Make sure they're drinking water. Make sure that they are replenishing their electrolytes and things like that uh, because they are going to be feeling a little bit warmer, especially if they're wearing body armor uh, with the field uniform on, things like that. Um, either way, it's uh, old reliable. This is going to work for 99% of this, for 99 of the situations that you're going to be in. You know, Anything that you can do in this uniform, you can do in this uniform too. Uh, that's just this th this uniform is just a little bit more comfortable this one is a little bit hot that's uh, that's just all there is to it right if you are looking to buy a, to buy 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 a uniform excuse me if you're looking to buy a uniform and you're you know you don't want to break the bank and you can only really afford to buy one get a surplus uniform uh it doesn't need to be you know marpat could be uh the multi cams that the army and the Air Force use now, but uh, it's going to do you a lot more than what a combat uniform is going to do you because a combat uniform is pretty specialized. Um, to go on to the combat uniform now, um, I think a lot of people forget what the benefit of a combat uniform is, and it's the flame retardancy, right? It's not that it's cooler and that it feels nicer and things like that it's the flame retardancy. So if you're a vehicle crewman or something like that, absolutely you need to be wearing a combat uniform or a lot of them wear flight suits. Uh, there wasn't that long ago in I Iraq where infantrymen were, were rocking flight suits because of the flame retardancy from IEDs was such a threat that they had to stop wearing these and they had flight suits. These didn't exist yet. So uh, the flame retardancy is the biggest benefit that you get from them. Um, now, the biggest drawback to field uniforms is uh, the dura or to combat uniforms is the durability. They are very lightweight. They're very comfortable. They're very cool. They keep you cool and things like that. But they are not very durable. They tear like crazy. You know, I've only had this set for maybe a couple months. I've already got some small holes all up in the back here where I got shot with sesame rounds and things like that. Um, they're just not very durable. They're, they definitely have a lifespan, right? The thing about camis, you can have them for years and they're still going to be good to go. Frogs, they're, you know, they don't got that much in them. Uh, obviously, or I would assume so, that the cry precision ones are going to be a lot more durable than these ones. At least I would hope so at their price point. But, you know, I can only speak on my own experience here. And my experience is that these fucking fall apart. Um, so, uh, but that being said, they're just about the same thing. They're just lighter, thinner, and they're flame retardant. Um, they're going to work a lot better for you, uh, as far as like keeping you cool and things like that. Maybe if you're in an environment like desert or, you know, some other sort of air, arid climate where it's real hot, maybe the juice is worth the squeeze to wear combat uniforms instead of field uniforms. But, uh, one one place where I see these these uniforms worn a lot where they really shouldn't be is the jungle. You know, it's a uh, hundred percent humidity and it's a hundred degrees, right? It makes sense. I want to wear these these uniforms, but I'm telling you, if you wear these in the jungle, you're going to come out damn near naked, right? Because they are going to fucking shred. They are going to fall apart because there's so much stuff in the jungle. There's vines, thorns, and things like that that are going to get caught on your uniform, and you're going to get fucking shredded. Uh, so really, even though it's hot, this is going to be the better choice. Um, to talk a little bit about like your underclothing, things like that, 
Um, one, you know, in the Marine Corps, we're allowed to not wear a undershirt with our uniform, which does make it a lot cooler, a lot nicer uh, under certain circumstances. You know, you can't have like visible tattoos or things like that, which is bullshit anyway. But either way, uh, if you can, don't wear an undershirt with that, right? Uh, it, it's going to make it a lot nicer for you. Uh, de depending on the temperature and things like that. If you need to wear an undershirt though, maybe it's a little bit colder or maybe you got some people in charge of you that really fucking hate you. Um, you're going to want to go with cotton. Now that's going to sound weird because cotton has a lot of problems too. It, uh, gets really funky. It doesn't dry out well, things like that. Uh, but the benefit of cotton is it does not melt. It burns, right? So Still not good, but at least it's not going to melt to your skin where something like this, like these synthetic t-shirts and things like that, these are going to fucking melt to your skin. And then they're going to have to peel that thing off of you, causing you a lot of pain. Um, mm, yeah. Uh, obviously, the best undergarments are going to be something like merino wool. The downside of that is it's very expensive, though. And unless it's issued to you, then... Uh, you know, I've tried to buy merino wool clothes before. I've never pulled the trigger because it's like eighty dollars for a fucking shirt, and uh, I just, I, it, I, I just can't. Right? Uh, underwear with both of these uniforms, uh, or really with anything. I've had a lot of Marines in the past who were like, "Hey, I'm chafing real bad." I, I give them my body glide, and as they're putting on their body glide, I see that they're wearing like boxers. I'm like, yeah, no shit, you're chafing, you fucking idiot. Um, this is a personal preference thing. Some people have no problems with boxers, but I and most people are a proponent of like compression short type underwear when you're wearing them inside the field. Uh, these are still made of the synthetic that these are, so they might melt, but either way, uh, I don't want to chafe all the time. So I wear these. I try to get some long ones that come down to like here so they don't bunch up really, really quickly, things like that. Uh, but you're definitely going to want some sort of compression type short that is going to guard you from chafing and things like that. Uh, On to permethrin here. So these these uniforms are treated with permethrin from, from, from the factory. They both are. Um, as you wash them and as you wear them, they're going to start to lose that guard. So every once in a while, you might want to retreat them with some permethrin here. Um, just give a spray, you, you know, f follow the instructions on there, but it's going to re-guard you against those bugs and things like that. Make them not want to come into your, come into your uniform and things like that. Um, starch. Not a lot of people starch their uniforms anymore. Uh, that was kind of like a BDU's thing, but either way, if you are starching your uniform, just know that as you starch it more and more, you're going to start to defeat that IR repellency that, that they normally have. Uh, so if you're going to starch your garrison, you, it, it, you, your garrison stuff, that's fine. Just don't starch your field stuff and don't take a uniform from garrison that you've been starching the whole time that you've been wearing it and then transition it to a field uniform because it's, it, it, it's still like that round is downrange, right? Uh, so if you, if you like starch, keep it on the garrison uniform and don't take that garrison uniform and make it a field uniform because it's going to be ruined. Um, now on to pockets. Uh, so the things I keep in my pockets, I, no, I normally keep my admin stuff inside my right cargo pocket. I usually keep a pocket knife, a flashlight, a uh, right in the rain book, some extra pens and pencils. I keep my compass inside of my shoulder pocket and things like that. Uh, the reason why I bring up pockets is though, is a lot of people keep like medical gear inside their pockets. And I see the argument if you're just trying to carry some extra stuff, like extra tourniquets, some extra gauze, things like that. There's no problem with that. But what I disagree with is having your primary med kit inside your pockets. And the reason I say that is, you know, if I have my med kit inside my left cargo pocket and I lose my left leg, chances are that med kit is either gone or completely fucked, right? 
And that can happen with any med kit that's mounted on your gear. But, uh, you know, example, I got a tourniquet in my, in, in my left shoulder pocket, right? I lose my left arm. I might not even have that tourniquet anymore. It might be gone with my fucking arm. Or same thing, I have a tourniquet in my, in my left shoulder pocket. I lose my right arm or my right hand. Now I can't get to that tourniquet. So I would really advise uh, to keep your med gear on your gear, on your plate carrier, on your chest rig, on your belt, whatever it is, uh, for that reason specifically, because you might not even have it when you really need it. Um, last thing I'll talk about is uh, one more drawback with frogs is the camouflage. So we got camo on the sleeves and things like that, but all of this is just like t-shirt material. Well, I mean, it's, I mean, it's Nomex, but either way, there's no camouflage on it, right? So if you're wearing a chest rig or something with this type of uniform, then you have the whole, the majority of, of, your, tor of, your, of your torso is uncamouflaged. And that's a problem for obvious reasons, things like that. So if you are wearing a chest rig, you know, field uniform is probably the best way to go. Now, co combining the two, which if you're allowed to do so, I think that this is a pretty good way to go. If you're not allowed to do so, then I'm sorry. But the thing about any, any uniform, field or combat, what usually goes out first is the trousers. Uh, you know, you're taking a knee, you rip your crotch or things like that. Uh, usually the trousers are what goes out first. It takes quite a bit to get a field top to blow out. So if you can do so, and it's going to be real hot and you know it, um, wear field trousers with a combat top. And, you know, like I said, maybe you're allowed to do it. Maybe you're going to do it anyway and hope that no one catches you. But that way, at least the top of your body is going to be nice and cooled down, which is, you know, the important part, right? And then you're going to have the durability of the, of the field uniform on your legs where it really matters. Um, that being said, you know, maybe you're allowed to do that. Maybe you're not. But either way, that's what I like to do. And I find it works pretty well for me. Uh, so uh, if you guys have questions or comments, you can drop them in the comment section or you can hit me up on Instagram at The Grown Perspective. Uh, either way, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.